it is time for a haul because I have a bunch of products here in front of me that I have been hoarding for the past couple of weeks and I wanted to share them with you. So there are some products from Sephora, from MAC, um, from Saks. I went to their beauty counters a few weeks ago. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the Sephora stuff first. Um, I'm hoping to upload this on Thursday, which is when the Sephora semi-annual sale happens. They usually have a sale at the beginning of the year, around April, and then at the end of the year in November. So it's a really good opportunity to get makeup at a discounted price. So if you are a VIB Rouge, your sale starts today, so your 15% off starts today. If you are a VIB, then I think it starts tomorrow. And then if you are just a regular beauty insider, it starts on Saturday. I don't know what the days are. So anyway, I'll start with the things I got at Sephora. I got two foundations from Sephora because I am on the hunt for that perfect wedding day foundation. And uh, because I'm not a foundation person, I don't normally wear foundation on a regular basis. I usually wear um, tinted moisturizers or, you know, lighter weight um, bases like CCs or BBs. So to be honest with you, I really had no idea even where to start because there are so many freaking foundations out there. So I did the noob thing and I just googled, you know, best wedding day foundation and a few of them popped up. The most popular one that popped up had to be the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, which is why I picked up. I also heard just really great things about this in general, not even just for special occasions, but just for everyday wear. And uh, I gotta say, I can see why people like this product so much because it looks great on the skin, it blends seamlessly, um, it looks natural, it has a buildable finish, it has a luminous finish, it's not shiny, doesn't make you look greasy, but it just gives your skin a really natural glow, which is exactly what I wanted. It wears pretty well. Um, I have a very oily T-zone and pretty much normal everywhere else, so I have just resigned myself to the fact that I always have to have a primer on and set my makeup with a powder if I want it to get through the day. It's a really great foundation and I'm really excited that I picked it up. I am in the shade 6.5 in this. Also for your reference, I am an NC35 in the MAC Studio Fix foundation or fluid foundation um, just to give you more of an idea of where I fall in the shade spectrum. So the other foundation that I picked up is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD um, Invisible Cover Foundation. So I did own the original version of this and I really liked it. To be honest I can't tell you definitively which one is better because I didn't use the original formula regularly enough to really definitively say like I can tell the difference between the two but I really like this foundation. I like the formula. It applies beautifully again has a really nice seamless finish great under flash photography and uh, wears well it's really all I can ask for in a foundation um, in the makeup forever I am in the shade Y375 I also picked up a concealer and um, I was really torn with whether I would get this concealer or the um, urban decay naked skin concealer I think I might still get that one during the sale because I am really intrigued by it. I've heard really great things about it and that's what they used on me when they did the Sephora makeover and I really liked it. It wore really well but I thought I would just give this one a shot because I also heard really good things about this one and really the consistency of both of them, this one which is by the way the Bare Minerals Bare Skin Complete Coverage Serum Concealer but this texture and consistency is really really similar to the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer super similar. They're both really kind of fluid and smooth and creamy and I just really like that. The NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which I absolutely love, and the Sephora Future Gel Concealer, they, compared to this and the Urban Decay Naked Skin, have a bit of a drier formula. So um, I wanted to try something that was a little bit more fluid, so I picked this up and I really, really like it. I also got myself a new setting powder. So this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder. I love this stuff. It works so well. This will last me forever. I think it took me three or four years to finish up my last loose setting powder from Laura Mercier. Um, so I anticipate this lasting quite a while, especially because I have so many powders, I rotate it through them. Um, but this is a really nice setting powder. Um, I got the translucent one because it just works 
you know, really well. It's You can't notice it on your skin once you apply it and buff it in. And it's just a really nice product for oil control too. You know my love for Hourglass Ambient Powders. So naturally, I had to pick up the Strobe Lighting Powder. I really didn't want to. I told myself I didn't need it, especially because the color that I wanted was really similar to one of the ambient powders that I already owned. So I ended up going with Euphoric, which is the darker of the four shades. It has a like warm like champagne tone to it. And this is really, really similar to the ambient lighting powder in Luminous. So I really don't know why I picked this up other than the fact that I have a problem and I am obsessed with this formulation. Um, this is a really great subtle highlighter. So it's not like the shimmering skin perfector from Becca. It's not like the Mary Luminizer from the Balm. It is just a really subtle product. And I think that's why I like it. Sometimes you just want that glow to your skin, but you don't want it to be too overbearing. Um, so this is really great. Uh, it blends beautifully and it just gives your skin a really nice sheen. Um, it's not as sparkly on the skin as it looks in the pan, so that's always good news because it's not cool to have like flecks of glitter on your skin sometimes, um, but it's a really great product and I'm really happy I picked it up. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm wearing eyeshadow again today. Um, it's the end of the day, the end of the work day, so most of it may have already come off because I tend to rub my eyes unconsciously throughout the day. So I'm starting to wear eyeshadow more, really just neutral colors, and I'm kind of just rediscovering my love for eyeshadow. You guys know I, I rarely wore eyeshadow before, but um, because, again, everything kind of goes back to my wedding. It's like everything, there's just all intersects at that at that point but because I'm gonna be wearing eyeshadow for my wedding I've been testing out different eyeshadows and formulations and kind of rediscovering what I had in my collection which really is not a lot mainly just the naked one palette but anyway I just kind of am discovering how much fun it is to play with eyeshadows but eyeshadow is nothing without a good primer so I picked up the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion which I love this new packaging I still remember the old crap happy hard plastic packaging that this used to come in um, because it, that was really bad packaging. You wasted almost like the last quarter of the product because you couldn't dip your brush in there or your wand. But anyway, so I'm really happy that they have repackaged it since then. And um, I, this is my favorite eyeshadow base. It's just the first one I ever used and nothing has really ever compared to this. And I still love it to this day. So I picked one up because I'm starting to wear eyeshadow again and I need a primer if I want it to last more than two hours because I have really oily eyelids. With that said, my last Sephora purchase is this eye brush. So this is the Smoky Crease Brush, just number 31. I don't know if they still call it the Smoky Crease Brush. I know it's just a crease brush online, um, but I really like this. I had to get new eyeshadow brushes because I gave a lot of my eyeshadow brushes away or I just decluttered them and then when I was discovering eyeshadow again, I was thinking to myself, wow, I really don't have a lot of really good brushes anymore. So I picked this up because it's a really great blending brush, so it's really great for blending in the crease. Um, yeah, it's basically an eraser. If you make a mistake, just blend it up with this brush and everything will be fine again. Moving on to a few MAC things that I picked up. So I picked up two MAC brushes because again, I didn't have any. So these are the two brushes that I picked up. Um, I got the 239 brush, which I believe they call the shader brush. It's just really great. It's like a flat, dense brush that's great for packing on color on the lid. And then I got the infamous 217 brush. And I don't know what they call this one. I think it might be the blending brush, but um, it's really great for putting on color, blending things out. And I'm just really happy with my new purchases. So these are my favorite eye brushes right now because to be honest, these are the only decent ones that I own. I have a couple other ones, but these are basically it. But I have found that just using these three brushes, I've been able to do pretty much any makeup look with any neutral shadow that I own. Now I also picked up an eyeshadow quad for MAC. So I went to a MAC Pro store and uh, I made a little quad for myself. 
I'm kind of rediscovering MAC because of their eyeshadows. Um, I just spent so much time at this counter just swatching different colors and shades. Ultimately, I went with these four. I also thought I would mention that the prices for the Pro Pan palettes for eyeshadows has gone down. So before they were $12 each, but now they are only $8. So anyway, these are the four shadows that I ended up going with. It's a really nice neutral look. So I picked up the infamous All That Glitters. Um, this one is Wedge, uh, Woodwinked, and then Espresso. So it's just a really nice combination of mattes and shimmery shades. So it, I just really have been loving this palette. I also wanted to mention this product. I got this from Saks at the Chantecaille counter. So this is the Chantecaille Future Skin Oil-Free Gel Foundation. And uh, this was another product that I picked up for potentially a wedding day foundation. And it is a really great product. The only thing I don't like about this is the fact that it comes in a jar because you know, gross. Um, but it's a really great product. It applies beautifully on the skin. It has such a rich, creamy gel consistency, and it just feels so hydrating on the skin. I will say that this doesn't offer as much coverage as like Luminous Silk or the Makeup Forever foundation, but it still looks beautiful on the skin. It offers the most natural finish. So even if I don't use this as a wedding day foundation, I'm definitely going to use this as an everyday foundation because it is just, it looks so natural, it's easy to apply, and it's one of those no fuss products. And uh, I really, really like it. Also really don't like the price tag of this. This is $98. There's only like one fluid ounce in this, which is crazy. The last thing I wanted to talk about was this. I have no other segue to bring us to this product, so I'm just gonna mention it before I say goodbye. Um, this is the L'Occitane Almond Shower Oil. So this is the refill bag. So it's not the cutest packaging in the world, but um, it's not supposed to be because it's just supposed to refill your existing um, container. But uh, my friend Kat introduced me to this and I have been obsessed with it ever since. It just is a really great shower oil. It makes your skin feel so silky and smooth. It smells great and um, my skin just feels a lot more hydrated and it feels a lot more silky after I use this. So really happy that I got this. So that is my haul. I think I managed to incorporate everything that I picked up recently. You guys will have to let me know what's on your wish list for the Sephora sale because I have a few things that are on my wish list. For example, um, Burberry eyeshadows because I I'm dying to get my hands on pale barley now that I'm actually wearing eyeshadows. I could never really justify it before because I, I knew I would never wear it, but now that I'm kind of slowly working my way back into the eyeshadow world, I think I can justify a pale barley purchase. Anyway, let me know what you guys are going to be picking up during the sale, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!